Here we have uh, a daylight and presence sensor. Adding a daylight sensor to your network is very simple. Simply go to more, nearby devices, select the sensor and add it to your network. Once it's added, you'll see that it's changed to the network name. So you can go back to your network. Within more sens sensors, <clears throat> you'll then see the sensor itself. It's currently showing you the signal strength from your mobile device to the actual sensor. It's also showing you the lux value which the sensor is receiving. If we select the sensor, for now we'll ignore the present sensor options, we'll do that later on. As with any device, you can change the name and change the icon. Selecting daylight sensor will also allow you to change the sensitivity and the tolerance of this particular sensor. If needed, selecting current value will also allow you to calibrate, calibrate your sensor using a, a lux meter. For the sake of this test, we're going to set, change the sensitivity to 100%. You now see that the lux value is currently 78. But if I shine a torch directly into the light, it will suddenly jump to almost 2000 lux value. And as I rub it away, it drops back down to 79. You'll have noticed that in the side there right now, there is a, an icon of a walking figure. That's something that you'll see when the sensor detects presence. We'll now create a scene using a tunable white light and we'll also create a circadian profile for it. As you can see here in the app, I've added a tunable white luminaire to my network. If you look at the white wall next to the sensor, you'll currently see that it's uh, very white and showing six, roughly 6,000 Kelvin. If I adjust it right down to the opposite end, you will hopefully see in the video that it is looking a lot more orange now. This may or may not show particularly well, depending on how much this camera tries to compensate for the change in light. For now, I'll put it back to somewhere in the middle. So let's first create a scene. We'll call it circadian, or if you like, HCL, human centric lighting. Add a scene. We'll select our tunable white luminaire. And now we'll add a circadian rhythm to this scene by using the graph kind of icon there in the bottom. There isn't a new profile in use yet, so let's create a new one. Let's call it circadian for now. And you'll see that the tick is still next to not in use, so we'll select the circadian rhythm. There's now a graph at the bottom which we can actually edit. <clears throat> and we can now change this format to however we want it to be. This option in the middle here allows you to slide this dot around. And if you look at the top left of the top left of the app, it's showing me the time of day and the current Kelvin value. So if we go here at 10.30 in the morning, this will be 6,000 Kelvin. And by three o'clock in the afternoon, the color temperature will have dropped to 4,200, roughly 4,200 Kelvin. You can adjust this by simply moving the point So you can make the, the curve as sharp or as smooth as you want it to be. Selecting a point and then pressing the rubbish basket will also remove points. And you can also add a point by simply holding down a spot on the line. So let's say we want our luminous to come on at 3000 Kelvin at six o'clock in the morning. We need to adjust this to 3 a.m. 
Sorry, I said six o'clock in the morning. That's roughly six o'clock there. We said 3000 Kelvin, so we need to raise the Kelvin up. So that there is roughly, roughly six o'clock in the morning, 6000 Kelvin. Uh, let's say that we want it to be 6000. Now we want it to be 6000 Kelvin by 10 o'clock in the morning. Let's first find 6000 Kelvin. Actually, let's make it 5000, it's easier. And then 10 o'clock. Somewhere there, that'll do for now. We'll then keep it at 5,000 Kelvin until three o'clock in the afternoon. At which time we'll then let it drop all the way back down to Two thousand seven hundred fifty by midnight. So this is not normally a curve that you would use, but it's an example. When you finish, press done. You can see how the curve here, or the response graph at the bottom, has now changed to update it. So if we go back, and because we're using a circadian rhythm, the current temperature of the the current colour temperature of the luminaire is irrelevant because it will take on the temperature defined in the circadian profile. So we'll now press done and done again. So let's now activate that circadian profile. Um, I could see a very slight change on the wall. I don't know if the camera picked it up. But as an example, let's manually control color of the light so it's very orange hopefully my camera has picked that up so as you can see here it's very orange now let's go back to the rhythm so in order for that circadian rhythm to work the scene must be active so if I now select the scene you should see the change in color on the wall and you can now see that the color temper the color underneath the icon has changed slightly to compensate. So it's now following the response graph within the circadian profile. It's important to remember though, that in order for the circadian profile to be working, the scene must be active. We'll now create a new scene, which is going to use a daylight saving. simply call it daylight. Again we'll select the same luminaire. The colour temperature at this point is irrelevant. We're not going to con uh, consider colour temperature at this point, although you could also add a, a circadian profile to this same scene. In order to change uh, to use daylight saving we'll select the sun or contrast icon. You're then presented with a number of modes. Basic on off allows you to define at which point the scene turns on the luminaire and turns it off. Right now, for example, it would turn on the luminaire when it reads 500 lux and turn it off when it reads 1013 lux. The other options are open loop and closed loop. These two differ slightly in that an open loop is designed to, to, to sense natural daylight coming into a building. So a sensor would normally be placed externally to the room. Closed loop is when a sensor is contained within the same area as the luminaires, so it's internal. An open loop allows you to define a graph based on the amount of lux being read by the sensor. So if in this example here, at this particular position, when the lux sensor is reading 736 lux, 
it will dim the level of the luminaires down to 51%. And as usual, you can change this graph however you want to. But for this particular demonstration, we're going to use the closed loop. The reason for that is we have our sensor here and the luminaires are above us. So we have selected closed loop as our mode of operation. We now need to select a controlling sensor. In this case, we only have one sensor, but you could select multiple sensors and the value would then be averaged across them all. We will not use the use dedicated sensor option because that is for luminaires, which actually have a built in sensor. The option use full dim range will allow the scene to be dimmed beyond its maximum. So if I set a dimming level of 80% on the luminaire, this would allow it to go beyond that 80%. A minimum dim level means regardless of the light falling onto the sensor, the, lo the luminaires would always be on at a minimum of 10%, even if there was still enough natural daylight in the room. But I'm going to turn that off. Uh, the default value is 500 lux. Let's lower that down to around about 265. For this demonstration, I'm also going to change the lower the change rate to one second. The change rate is how often the sensor looks for a change in the value of the, of the light coming onto it. Tolerance, I will also drop to 10%. Tolerance, tolerance is there to select how far away you can deviate from the lux value, in this case 265. Once that's done, I can select back. Uh, I will leave my dimmer level as it is and press done. So let's look at the input for our sensor now. The sensor is currently reading 92 lux. Again, if I shine a light on it, it jumps to almost 2000. If I take the torch away, it's reading 75 or 68 lux, which means Considering that we have set our daylight scene that we, we requested 265 lux, it should turn all the lights on. As you can see, our light is currently at 100%. And our daylight scene is still running. As an experiment, I'm going to sh shine the torch into the daylight sensor. You should now see the dimming level starting to drop. So as the as the lux value coming into the sensor is now higher, it's naturally dimming the light to try and gain to go try and get the two hundred and fifty something, two hundred and sixty five lux value that we set in the scene. And if I was to leave my torch there, it'll dim and dim and dim down quite a lot. Because as you know, the current value, the current looks input is 1,900, 1,990. So it would eventually turn that lamp off completely. It's still dropping. If I now take my torch away, you see that the value now slowly starts to go back up again. For this experiment where I, where I only have a, a single tunable uh, white light and the camera is automatically trying to recompensate, you probably won't see any difference in the output from the bulb in my, in my video now. That's why I showed you the dimming level of the actual light. But if you have a larger luminaire in your customer installation, you'll see the difference.